Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's Bruce here at Stock Markets with Bruce. It's Uncle Bruce. I'm wearing my green shirt for you today because maybe we can have an update, please. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, we'll see what happens. Can't complain about the big market. The uh, The Dow had a big day Monday, had an up day yesterday. It's up in the pre-market this morning. This is Wednesday, June the 23rd, 2021. So, you know, let's keep it going. Um, let's see if some of the stocks we love to follow are going to have a good day today, too. Cross our fingers for that. I noticed that GameStop is up $2.13 uh, in the pre-market this morning. It's at two twenty two fifty three. dollars That's a good thing. Um, and then I noticed that uh, 23 and Me, they're up $0.09 cents this morning to eleven seventy six. pardon me. And um, I noticed that... Uh, uh, what was the other one I was looking at? Uh, yeah, SoFi is at uh, twenty one forty two, up twenty two cents this morning, and over at uh, Gore's Holding, we're up seven cents on the pre market to fifteen ten. So we we have a little, you know, a little positive movement here and there. We'll we'll take anything we can get. Uh, you know what the hey? What's the point of owning stocks when I can buy deep in the money calls? What's the point? What's the whole point? Uh, well. If you can get the stock at a nice low price and they make a nice little run for you, which I'm thinking for some of these SPACs, um, then you can use those shares as instruments with which to write call options against. And you are in effect, say you're writing a, you're writing a call option that brings you a 250 premium for like a month on a, on a per share basis but you only pay ten dollars for the stock it's trading at 25 or 30 bucks and you're bringing in two bucks 250 a share you're bringing in 25 percent on your money on what you paid for that stock of ten dollars you're bringing in 250 a month now that's 25 percent of your investment every month 12 months a year i call that a pretty good return on your money that's that's kind of like warren buffett money um that's one of the benefits of having stock uh, in the money calls though you can buy a bunch and if you're successful and your stock has a run, you're a winner. If the shares don't have a run, you could break even or be a loser. But if you own stock and you're writing calls on the stock all the time, you're always generating an income. And if you're uh, writing calls on a stock that and a stock starts moving up and you buy the calls back and rewrite new calls on a rollover as the stock keeps rolling in front of you, you are still experiencing the capital gain of the stock as you're rolling out options going forward. Um, but if a stock stagnates for a while, you're generating this income as these options keep shrinking. Write them, they shrink, write them, they shrink. The values every time they do that is your money. You're getting paid to stick around for the big payoff you're hoping to come someday, or you're just a long-term fan of the company and or the stock, and you want to generate, <clears throat> you know, you're happy generating a couple hundred percent of your return on your stock, and you might just keep buying more stock with the option premium, another advantage to do this, to grow your stock position. You want to have a larger share of shares, or you want to diversify your, your account. And so you've got two or three stocks that you're writing options on, and you're taking all those those proceeds, option proceeds, into a fourth stock that you're acquiring now to build a position in that one to start writing options on those. And so that's another way to take advantage of this whole thing as opposed to in the money calls. But in the money calls can give you tremendous leverage, can give you tremendous profits if you guess right and if your timing is right. And the key to in the money options is to make sure you have enough time on your contract to give you a return. How many times am I reading comments every day now? Every day I am getting comments from viewers who are going, I have a contract that expires in what, this week. What should I do? I have a contract expiring next week. What should I do? It expires in three weeks. How much longer should I hold it? What should I do? These are questions you shouldn't have if you're an option player. You shouldn't have these questions at all. You should be in a position of a six-month, seven-month, eight-month contract giving you plenty of time for the first 90 days to see something happen. And if something doesn't happen in the first 90 days, then you roll out of a contract that still has four months to live and roll into a new seven or eight month contract. Again, buying yourself another three or four months of time without risk and stress regarding what's going to happen with this stock. But uh, those are strategies you have to uh, you have to figure out. What is the biggest risk on writing calls on a SPAC like SoFi? Well, SoFi isn't a SPAC. It's now a 
online banking company used to be a SPAC company that they bought out but that's beside the point um for january 22 if it surges do i lose money uh look if you write a call option on sofi say a 35 dollar call option um you're offering your stock for 35 dollars until then plus the premium you're getting now so if you're getting four dollars a share you're getting 34 Thirty-four dollars or thirty-nine dollars. He's writing a thirty-five dollars contract. That's the that's the limitation. You can't make any more than that. If you get the, the stock goes to forty or forty-one, you're not getting the forty forty-one. But if you get exercised when the stock breaks thirty-five, say it goes to thirty-six fifty, and you get bought out at thirty-five, you've already got this four or five dollars a share in your hand right now. So you've actually been paid thirty-five plus five. You got forty bucks. It's trading up thirty-six. 37, turn around, buy the stock back right away. Take the money you have, buy the stock back, and now write $60 contracts for four or five months if you want and take in a bunch of money for those. That's, the, that's, your, that's your downside. How bad is that? That's not bad. That's pretty good. Is the reason for buying some call contracts six months out around merger date for these SPACs is because the original investors are locked in until then, example, highest rate of price growth in the first six months. Uh, that's part of it. Um, the other part of it, of course, is that the reason I recommend these SPACs is because of how heavily funded they are right off the bat. Uh, they got a ton of cash in their bank accounts, and they are going straight out to do more business. And so they're sitting on a lot of cash and uh, stocks restricted, and I think they might actually make deals in the first three to six months as well that could dramatically affect the upside of the stock as these assets become part of these public companies and will now trade at much higher multiples than if they were private only uh, yes um that's why i want you in early so if i have a call contract with a 15 dollars strike price and i'm already on green even though the stock is still in the 11s if I were to sell, I would get those gains or it'd have to be 15 plus. Uh, if you paid $2 for a call contract and it's trading at $3 right now, it doesn't matter where your stock is. It doesn't what matter what the exercise price is. It doesn't matter what the expiration is. If the stock you bought at two, the contract you bought at two is now a contract selling at three, you sell it, you make a $1 a share profit, $100 a contract thousand dollars for 10 contracts how many every many you got irregardless of what anything the stock does before you bought it during the time you had it or after this is simply a transaction like buying and selling stock or anything else there are people out there who don't buy stock they only buy and sell options they don't buy and sell shares they play the stock market by buying and selling options they want to believe in sofi but they don't ever buy sofi they only buy sofi contracts they go long on calls, they go short with puts, and then they try to sell them for a profit. That's all they do. There's people who do that with Apple, Netflix, Microsoft, Google, um, AMC, uh, GameStop, Gores. Every stock out there has options. Practically every stock out there. And there are some people who only trade in options. They don't trade in any stock, and they don't have to. They don't have to ever trade in any stock. They don't have to ever do anything with the stock if they're trading options. They get in to get out. That's all they're doing. It's as simple as that. Now, you guys who own stock could sell contracts against your stock. For every 100 shares, you can write one contract. And you will sell a contract first at the best price you can get for it. And you are hoping to either buy it back at a lower price, if the shares stay where they are, go a little lower, or at the end of the contract's lifespan the contract is worthless because the stock never got as high as the exercise price you chose to write a contract for and those contracts die worthless and you keep all the money you got when you sold it in the first place so if you sell a call contract for 350 that's 350 a share 350 dollars a contract 10 contracts 3500 dollars you don't buy them back stock doesn't go over the strike price you wrote them at you keep all 3500 dollars thank you very much Thank you, everybody, for uh, for that. If you'd like to talk to me about a one-hour session, you want to get together with me, send me an email 
through uh, my email address, which is right here. It's the old school hotmail.com email address. Send me an email. Say, Bruce, I'd like to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one session. When can you book me in? I'd like to, uh, I'd like to make a reservation and, and, and lock it in right away.